Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, thank you, Mark, for, for this introduction. When we are talking about religion, we tend to go, tend to that we are going back into the, into the past. And I think I, I, I will also do that here today, go a little bit into the past. 1,000 years ago, uh, more than 1,100 1, years ago, no, 1, 000, yeah, more than 1,000 years ago, Christianity was adopted in my country. And how was that done? The Icelanders were heathens before. And uh, they came to the parliament, and there were two groups, one heathen and one Christian. And it looked like there was <coughs> breaking out a great battle with weapons. Then people decided to choose one man, which was the president of the parliament, to decide what to do. And he was the leader of the heathens. He was thinking for one day, and then he stood up and came with his verdict. And he said, we shall have one religion and one law, because if we break asunder the law, we break asunder the peace. And on that basis, he decided that everybody was to be Christian. This was not very popular by everybody, but he also decided that they could keep their customs in secrecy. And maybe that made the difference but these customs were, were forgotten some years later. This is not possible today. We have to, we have to live under one law, but we have to live under the circumstances that we have many religions, different religions, different cultures, different habits, and we have to find a solution on how we can do this. We need to live in unity, and, uh, and we have, in a way, all the same wish. We have the wish to live in peace. We want respect. We want respect for human beings. We want uh, respect for our societies. We want respect for our freedoms, respect for our different religions, and we want respect for justice. And the theme today we are going to discuss is the promotion of world peace th through interfaith dialogue. And of course, this is possible. And why are we doing that now? I think we all see desperate need. We see the situation in Syria, in Iraq, and in the Middle East. We see the situation in Afghanistan. We see the situation in Sudan and other places in Africa. And now we see a situation in the heart of Europe, in Ukraine, so there is a desperate need. And we, if we are looking into the future, we are seeing big challenges, especially with climate change. It will not be easy to meet new conditions in the world, and we will need tolerance, understanding, and dialogue between countries between religions, and so on. And we have decided to do this here in Rome. And why is Rome a good place? Rome has a very, very special place in our hearts and minds. Although we are not all Catholics, and I'm not a Catholic either, we have great respect for Rome. We have great respect for the Vatican and the Pope. And we have seen 
that they can, uh, they can uh, help uh, to find solutions and they have been very able to work for peace in the world. So I think we have all trust in the Roman Catholic Church to lead discussions and dialogues between, between religions. Finally, I would like to quote a man who was living in my country in the year 1200, and he said this just before he, he died. Hark, heavens, <clears throat> heavens creator, hear the poet's prayer. May your merciful grace grant me its embrace. Thus I vow to thee who have created me, I am your slave, you are my Lord. I think we can all agree on this. I think we can all agree on that we are the slaves of those who created us. And we have an obligation to work in the spirit. We have an obligation to work for peace. We have an obligation to work for cooperation between religions, societies in the world. And we have to run that road. And I certainly hope that this conference will help us in leading us into the future to find peace among nations and to help us to respect each other in every way, respect each other more than we have done in the past. And with these words, I would like to join Mark in welcoming you all to this conference. <clears throat>